Whenever people are fearful in betting on the market continuing to sell off, like we just saw a few days ago, Hello everyone, today Chris Vermulen answers that stocks just hit an all-time high. Will this momentum continue? Subscribe now, hit that bell icon, and embark on an enriching journey toward financial success. Let's unlock the potential of these markets together and pave the way for a brighter financial future. Welcome aboard. People were expecting a huge sell-off in January and February because of how far it's run up uh, late last year. But it hasn't done that yet. Let's take a look at the charts, Chris, and see whether or not momentum is still on the upside. Sure. All right. So if if we take a look at the charts, the equities, the markets have been really on a tear all of 2023. We have the SP 500. I'm going to just jump to a we'll jump to a uh, monthly chart here real quick. Uh, if we take a look at the markets, we have seen this super strong recovery and just. Today, as you and I are recording this, which is January 19th, uh, if we just draw a line across these highs, you can see the SP 500 just broke to new yeah. all-time highs. We got the stock market up, the NASDAQ's up almost 2%, SP 500 up about 1.1%. So we're starting to see a big pop. And I've been waiting for this. You and I talked about this last month about how I, I believe 2024 could be a terrible year for investors across pretty much every asset class except the U.S. dollar or people who are holding U.S. Uh, currency, uh, and that's simply because the stock market here has been has been pushing higher, and a lot of people are betting on the market uh, 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 more or less going higher here. And when everybody gets long and they're expecting this market to keep going, it's usually when we see the stock market go the opposite direction. And if we take a look at what happened in 2022. If we take a look at these kind of just cycle highs and cycle lows in the market. So the year 2022 um, started near a cycle high. Price was pushing up. And then more or less, it ended not at the low for the year, but it ended on a cycle low. And as you can see, there's wave-like patterns that happen in the market over and over again. Those are just typical price action. But we opened on a high, closed on a low. People this year, uh, back in, in uh, the beginning of 2022, were expecting a huge rally, and they got the exact opposite. Last year, everyone was expecting the markets to continue. They thought it was going to be a bloodbath, and we ended up with one of the biggest rallies ever. And now we have got this stock market poking to new all-time highs. People are piling into growth stocks or moving into tech and all these things. And now we got the SP 500, which to me is the, the broad market indicator that if the SP 500 hits all time highs, anybody who's short, because there has been a ton of people based on our analysis and our sentiment charts, uh, a lot of people are betting on the stock market going lower here. And of course the market is gonna do what it does best, which is try to pull money out of them, get, get the majority of people offside. And it does that by simply going higher, hitting new all-time highs. Mm -hmm. Anybody who's short is more or less going to have to get out because now there's no overhead resistance. The trend is up. It's a gut. It's breaking out. And so they're going to have to cover their shorts, which creates a big pop like we're starting to see today. This this pop could last a several days. And then there's all the people who thought that, uh, that weren't in the market last year and that we had a huge rally and they're going to finally bite the bullet. They're going to have extreme FOMO. It's going to hit headline news, SP 500, new all-time highs. Uh, they're not going to be able to take it anymore. And they're going to be like, I just, I got to get in. This market's taking off without me. And so it's going to suck in the last of the people who aren't long. When the markets pop like today, when stocks in particular hit an all-time high, your next move is, as a trader is usually to... Um, decide whether or not this all-time high is going to uh, persist. In other words, momentum is going to persist upwards or we're going to have a correction, right? That's usually what you're, you're deciding. So let's walk through your decision-making process. The indicators you're looking for to decide whether or not momentum is still on the upside. Are you looking at volume? Are you looking at put call ratios? Are you looking at sentiment? Are you just looking at the technicals uh, in terms of RSIs? What are you doing? Yeah, we're, we're looking at a lot of those. Um, so like, I believe like, you know, there's a million indicators people can throw on the charts. The reality is almost all of those indicators are uh, based on price on the chart you're looking at. So they're all taking the same data and trying to create some new type of analysis. Every piece of data that that I use 
in our strategies is a completely different set. So I'm a technical trader. So we follow price. So we use trend analysis. We use moving averages. We use cycles. We want to see what the price charts are doing. And in a nutshell, I literally just clean the charts. I make them so they'll, they have no color. And then I just simply color code them that when we have uh, volume flows, when we have sentiment, when we have uh, trends in our favor, uh, we have different assets doing different things because money is always flowing through different uh, defensive um, sectors or defensive commodities or you know there's risk on and risk off uh, assets. Depending what all those flows are doing, I can color code these charts. And so you can see when we have you know signals and moves to the upside, I have them colored red when the trend is down. And um, I mean, a lot of the, pretty much all of my analysis is, is fairly proprietary, but this one here, this chart on the right-hand side, this is the one that, that gives us a visual of what people are doing. And so when we're in a strong uptrend and we see these red bars, this is things like you just said, David, it's like uh, panic selling in the stock market. We've got uh, the VIX rising. We got put call ratio going out of whack. We've got um, short-term cycles out of favor. People are fearful. And so whenever people are fearful in betting on the market continuing to sell off, like we just saw a few days ago, the market almost always goes the opposite direction if you're in a bull market phase. And we are in a bull market phase right now. Question is, how far will that go? And it doesn't matter. Uh, there's no point in guessing. But um, you know, we just want to follow these, these, these trends. And that's the key here with our analysis is we get to see what other investors are feeling and what they're doing with their money. And when you can see what other players are, it's like playing poker and being able to look at their hands. That's what that's what my type of analysis does. I call it inner market analysis because we use way more than just chart analysis um, to pull all this together so we can see not only what people are thinking, but actually what they're doing with their money. I mean, this move, we can see just from our sentiment chart, these red bars. I talked about this several days ago saying this market is primed and ready to go higher. And so really all that's unwinding is the technicals. We're just seeing sentiment and everything unwinding right. as it should. You can see each time we have this, we have a very strong multi-day rally, a multi-week rally to the upside. So we're doing that. And the S, you know, this is the QQQ, but the QQQ just broke some very significant highs today. It popped and it's and now it's having this huge short squeeze, a big, everybody's piling out of this, uh, this big pop. And the same is happening with the SP 500. It's popped above. We're, we're hitting new all-time highs. And so, you know, a lot of times when these happen, these things happen, there is some type of economic data or news that comes out. Uh, a lot of people always say, oh, it was the news. But the reality is I can go back and you just look at the charts and, and really the trends are, are kind of always saying that is likely to happen. It's just sometimes it takes a bit of a catalyst to spark it. But um, yeah, you just have to follow the, the, the price. That is the key, understanding the money flows. Okay. Now let's just clarify for the audience who may not know you already. When you say you don't follow the news, it's not because it's it's not, you don't mean that you don't read anything that's going on. You just, what you, I think what you're trying to say is that the technicals and the charts are already factoring in uh, events. And so you follow the price that tells you everything you need to know. Right. Exactly. I, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't put any weighting towards any news, economic data, the Fed. I really, it really doesn't matter. Typically, if you understand the long term trend, which direction it's going, you understand the short term trends, you know, there's going to be all kinds of whipsaw, big rallies, big sell offs. And those big rallies and sell offs along the way are usually triggered by some type of news event. But I have learned, mm -hmm. I learned years ago in the, during the tech bubble that you can't make money really trading news. It's why aren't you why aren't you an event driven trader? I mean, if something happens in the market, let's say something, I don't know, if Fed decides to do something or I don't know, if Amazon lays off a hundred, you know, ten percent of its <laughs> workflow force. I'm just making up examples, right? Wouldn't, yeah, yeah. wouldn't you want to trade on that um on that no. news? Well, no, it, that's a that's a job. First of all, you never know when the news is coming out. So it's going to be right. like, I don't not want to be glued at a computer looking at screens and reading pieces of new headline sure. news hitting every second. Um, you never know when it's coming out. You never know um, if it's going to be good or bad. And even if you nail, oh, I knew economic data was going to be good or something, you never know how the market is actually going to re respond. Even if you think you know what it's going to do, a lot of times it, it, it's super random, right? So to me, it's just a whole rat's nest. It's a ton of noise. It's a waste of time. Um, if you just follow, as you and I mentioned before, 
the, the stock market is like the ocean tide. If the tide is going up and we can identify that on multiple time frames, we just know we want to be long. And um, those big pops and drops, we're probably already in, pos in a position. And if it goes in our favor, it's awesome. If it doesn't, it's going against the underlying trend. So oh. it's usually a one or two day move against us. And then the market recovers and, and continues its trend. So okay. I, I do not want to do really anything around news or fundamental data just because it can it, to me, it's random and uh, you got to right. be watching all the time to, to play that. Okay. Just to sum up your positioning, how much cash do you have right now over uh, relative to your overall position? Um, yeah, zero, depending on the portfolio. 50, 100, yeah. Yeah, depending on the portfolio. So if you, like with our, our passive um, technical investor strategy, we're 100% uh, we're long the stock market still here. Uh, okay, we so got into long, it. So how, how, how long would you... Not, not how long, but at what point would you consider taking some profits and positions off the table? So basically, you're, you're, you think momentum is still going to remain on the upside. What levels or key support levels or resistance levels, rather, would you want to look for before you you, you pivot your stance? Yeah. So so we got long with, with this is the weekly chart of the SP500 that I'm pulling up here. So we got long back early, early last year, and we've seen the market rally uh, dramatically poking to new highs. So we've been long for a long time, uh, almost, almost a year here. Um, at this point, we st we just let the market do its thing. This Our long-term investing strategy works very similar to our short term. It's just, it takes more time, more data uh, for, for us to get a, a sell signal. So we continue to ride this bull market phase higher until the technicals start to break down. Then we can start ratcheting up stops more or we can trim off profits. But right now, I mean, we are in a bull market phase and uh, the market is going higher. And so we just kind of follow it literally one bar at a time and reanalyze and uh, figure out what's what's going to happen. So, I mean, the key is just knowing when the tide is going up and when the tide is going down, we don't want to be involved in the market. So we avoid the corrections. And then if we were to flip it to our CGS strategy, which is more active, uh, we're about, um, we're probably about 65% um uh invested in the stock market right now uh so we're we've been scaling out as we hit targets like hit a 10 percent target of the markets we start to scale out and that's that's part of the strategy we want to move our risk aside and then that goes into a different etf that generates daily interest or monthly dividend payments so that money is sitting protected and continuing to grow uh, because we know as this market stretches higher the probability of a sharp pullback actually becomes more imminent yeah. And so when the market cracks and resets again, we will have already locked in profits. The trend will change. We'll get out of that trade I see. and we'll move into something else that goes up while the stock market is falling. So thank you for watching the interview highlights of Chris for Maluin. If you enjoy this highlight video, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.